At Plaque, we use AI to better predict and prevent heart attacks and strokes, so we're directly part of this change. Right now, in the healthcare system, it's a one diagnosis fits all category. So as long as patients meet a certain criteria, they then get the particular treatment option. What we now know, or probably have known for a long time, is that patients are unique. And that means in terms of their biology and their backgrounds and experiences. Using AI gives us the opportunity to leverage all that information. And I'm also referring to medical images, uh, patient demographics and clinical information to build a more precision medicine or personalized focus for healthcare when it comes to vascular disease. And in doing this, we're battling some of the most dangerous diseases or events known to humankind, which are heart attacks and strokes. For instance, my company, AVA, is on a mission to help millions of people who would like to hear better, especially in noisy environment, where the existing hearing assistant devices fail because they are not able to focus only on the relevant sounds, but they instead they amplify the desired sounds and noises equally. Through monitoring brain and biosignals, Alva's bionic ear allows everyone to select what they want to hear. We will eventually change the way we interact with all of our devices, thus enhancing our capabilities as humans. So our company, Kratos, uh, deals with helping people who suffer from musculoskeletal conditions. And today that affects about one in three Canadians, 20% um, 20, 20 of them being rural, who may not have access to a physiotherapist. So our platform is fully digital. Um, the people we help can do it from the comfort of their home. And communication with the physio is continuous because those that are lucky enough to actually be able to go and afford a clinic and go to the clinic are usually given a piece of paper and told good luck, um, you know, see you next time if you want to. And we want to continue that continuous relationship uh, with the physiotherapists so that people can, um, can learn to educate themselves as well and self-manage and uh, eventually no longer need a physiotherapist and be uh, fully independent as well as increasing their quality of life. Like so many other startups, our biggest challenge has been to get the necessary financial support to ha help our business to scale and to thrive. Having said that, we believe our persistence in doing good to create a better sounding future will eventually find its way to success. So the biggest challenge for me and my co-founders is that we're not medical professionals. I have a business background. Um, my two co-founders uh, vary between a more tech background and a more business background as well. And so we had a, a clear idea of how we wanted you know, to approach a certain problem with physiotherapy, but of course, we didn't necessarily have the physiotherapy expertise to address it, which is why we approached uh, our two great advisors who are PhDs in physiotherapy to help us with the more um, medical and therapeutic side of our solution. So one of the biggest challenges starting off was finding the right team to build such a dynamic product. And we're lucky now to be supported by a lot of cardiovascular researchers, AI, AI engineers, data scientists, all with the dream to now reduce the number of heart attacks and strokes around the world. Just go for it. Um, one of, I would say, almost like a regret is waiting a little bit too long for the perfect time to go into entrepreneurship. Uh, you know, waiting for the perfect idea, waiting to wake up one morning with an aha moment, which uh, very seldom ever happens. Um, if you want to be an entrepreneur, uh, start writing down problems you see around around you. Reach out to the right people. It's very easy to reach out to people on LinkedIn and get and get their feedback. Uh, if you have a day job, that shouldn't stop you. Don't just relax, uh, you know, every day after your day job, but start working towards your dream of entrepreneurship. And before you know it, uh, you'll have something tangible uh, that you can pursue and, you know, that will make you very happy. So that being said, my advice would be to find the right people early on. Know what your product is, what it's going to look like when it's in the market, and strategize um, as, as best as you can. And this is because it takes a long time to find the right people. Not just people with the right uh, academic background, for example, but also people that you know that you can work well with. So my humble advice would be to fall in love with the problem, not the technology. We entrepreneurs sometimes tend to fall in love with our coolest on earth technology without even making sure that our technology is solving a real problem. So if your technology fails, 
and you're still solving a real viable problem, you can still find alternative solutions. But if your technology fails and the problem you're solving is not viable, in other words, people do not badly need that, the probability of failure would be high and pivoting would be very costly. So that's why we should fall in love with the problem, not the technology.